Hello there and welcome to London Stansted Airport. I am here to fly to Spain. So I've watched F1 since I was a kid, but I did not attend my first motorsport race until two years ago, Formula E in Monaco. Since then, went to my first F1 race in, at Silverstone. I saw a Ferrari win, which is amazing as a Ferrari fan. And then since then, I've been to Monza, uh, Silverstone again, Spa, and Albert Park, Australia, where I saw a Ferrari 1-2 this year. And now I'm going to Spain. What you didn't know was, this wasn't in the plans this year. This year I planned to go to the Dutch Grand Prix in the Netherlands in August. What happened? Well, because that Grand Prix is, is in such high demand, there's a ballot system for that one. You, you can't just buy tickets. So I entered the ballot. I was, not I was not successful, but instead they offered me a ticket for 2025. So I have got a ticket for the 2025 Dutch Grand Prix, but not this year. So I thought to myself, I was going to go to the Dutch Grand Prix this year. I can't go. Let me choose another one. Spain. Spain's fairly cheap. Cheaper than the Dutch Grand Prix. Good location. Not too far away from England. I thought to myself, yeah, let's do that one. So I'm off to the Spanish Grand Prix. I got a three day ticket, but I couldn't make it for Friday. It's Saturday right now. Um, I booked three weeks holiday in Australia, a week and a half in America. I booked too much holiday this year for my workplace and I couldn't get the Friday off or the Monday off. I actually fly home on Monday. Um, when I went to Monza, I did it in one day. I flew out in the morning. Went to Monza, watched the race, straight back to the airport, flew back home the same night. I wanted to do that for Spain because Spain is fairly close, but I couldn't find the right flight times. I found the right morning flights and the wrong evening flights. They weren't late enough that night. So I thought to myself, screw it. I'll fly in on Saturday. I'll stay a night. I'll go on race day. I'll fly home on Monday. So that is the plan. That is what I'm doing. So uh, yeah, I'm also staying in a hostel. I always book hotels because that's what I prefer. I don't like camping, even though it's so much cheaper. Uh, I never stay in hostels because of trust issues and potential theft and you never know who you meet but you could meet some great people too so there's that advantage but yeah so I, I have a lot of paranoia and anxiety about um, that sort of stuff but regardless despite how socially awkward I sometimes can be I have booked a hostel for the first time in my life and I'm going to share a room with 10 other people and uh, we'll see how that goes down and uh, yeah that's for two nights so uh, I hope to enjoy the race it's going to be one big vlog but here is the plan I have got a flight with Ryanair, yes I know, I know, Ryanair, but look, they're cheap, they get you there, they do the job, okay, they might be delayed a bit, but it's fine, all right, as, as crazy as their pilots are, I trust them enough, I trust them enough, I've used them before, anyway, Ryanair to Barcelona, get a train from Barcelona to, forgot the station name, sorry, Barcelona Sand Station, which is not that far from the airport, get a train there, and from there, it's like a less than a mile walk to the hostel, so get checked in, get all sorted out, probably fall asleep because I had a heavy meal this morning and I feel like I had enough for like a day so I probably might go straight to bed because I'm landing at like 7 20 and I'm going to wake up as early as possible and hopefully get on a train uh, around 6 a.m something like that um, from Barcelona Sand Station to the track is not that far um, the station near the track is there's a bit of a walk to the track from there but I can do that or you can get a shuttle yes. but I can just take the walk it's fine and then yeah watch the race whatever get back to the hotel and the next morning I got a 9.15 a.m. flight to uh, to London. Um, so I gotta get up, get out of the hostel early again and get to the airport by hopefully by 6, 7 a.m. Get everything sorted out, get luggage checked in, that's it. I'm taking luggage, it's small luggage for two days, but I didn't have to do that, but I wanted to do it anyway. And uh, yeah, the funny thing is, I got work at 4 p.m. on Monday, so I had to book a flight that, that was early enough to get me home. Here's the, here's, the, here's, the, here's the catch. Um, it's a connected flight. A connected flight to get home from Barcelona to London. I don't know how that's possible, but that's what I'm doing. So I've got a flight from Barcelona to Madrid, which is further away from London. Then a flight from Madrid to London. So it's uh, operated by the same like booking, but it's two different airlines. It's British Airways and Iberia have like a partnership. Uh, I remember booking them to go to Madrid before and I used both airlines there and back. I used like British Airways to go there and Iberia on the way back, something like that. Um, so yeah, I've, I've got a connected flight and the first one's Iberia, the second one's British Airways to get from Barcelona to London, Barcelona to Madrid to London. So that's the flight home on Monday. That is the plan. Let me go through security.
customs and my suitcase is already there. way to go when I come here tomorrow. So my hostel is called Ola Hostel Col Blanc. Definitely pronounced that wrong. You also, also got a different name as well in like in Spanish but that's like the English uh, spelling. Um, it's 30 minutes walk from here so I'm gonna do a 30 minute walk. It's also very close to the Camp Nou Barcelona Stadium so that's pretty good. I'm not going there. I have been there before. But I'm not going there this time but it is pretty convenient that that's there so yeah. I wouldn't stay in, I don't know if I stay in a hostel again, like I'm only staying because I'm in a, on a budget but like uh, yeah it's a first time experience for me and I guess if I like it and I come back to Barcelona that's a good location but let me see what the hostel's like. My ticket is a return to the airport so that's useful. Uh, Maybe we should have stayed at that one <laughs> near the station. All right, so I'm at this corner. I've just come from that direction, so straight down from the station, and I got a turn into that way. Most of the walk is that way, and eventually it's a right turn, which is a road to my hostel. So, a couple turns, half an hour walk is not too bad. Almost there, turn right at the Sportium. The McDonald's just across down there. Might get it in the morning, to be fair, because it's cheap. Um, gotta go down the left, and then the second left. Walk past the pub and I see Lukaku scored for Belgium, not Lukaku, sorry, Tillemans scored for Belgium. Perfect timing. I stayed there for the replay for like 30 seconds. Now I'm going to go to Hostel. I've not been able to watch any of the Euros today. I've just seen the score lines, so that's pretty good timing. That's the first Euros football I've seen today. Apparently it is on this road somewhere. Oh then. That is it. I assume it's just this white building here. So I've got to go into an 11 bed room somewhere here. Uh, 5.59 a.m. 
everyone in my room is asleep. <laughs> so I had to be so quiet because it's still dark in there. I don't know when they turn the lights on, but I had to be so quiet and coming in, coming out. Because <laughs> like I went separately to brush my teeth and clean up and then to shower. And it's just like, uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I got there in the end. I'm not sure if I, can get, if I can get used to hostels, to be honest. And I did expect like, you know, a bit more I don't know, it's ironic for me because I'm socially awkward, but I'm surprised like no one's like talking to each other. It's just like it's one quiet room full of introverts, it seems like, because <laughs> no one's talking to each other. Uh, aside from the hotel guy who comes in sometimes uh, asking for someone's name or whatever. But um, yeah, like the bed is good and the shower facilities are fine. The customer service is good and everything. It's just that I don't know if I can get used to the vibe of a hostel. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I'm, hotels are definitely my go-to, uh, but obviously they're more expensive. But if I ever am on a budget, I'll look into hostels more. But uh, definitely like, I prefer my privacy and I prefer being able to sleep without being disturbed. If you guys have been watching my travel since 2022, obviously I've been on a lot of holidays since around March 2022. You might remember I bought a uh, post office travel money card. It's a card that you top up money on and use it as a credit card abroad. And it's like no, foreign charges etc and it's, it's a pretty cool perk i haven't used it in like since 2022 not because it's not a good thing it's just that i just stopped using it <laughs> um i had seven euros on it seven euros left i used it in australia before in, in different countries i still had seven euros left from european travels i'm just like oh that's a result tried to use it yesterday on my train I asked my pin code i'm just like well i don't remember <laughs> so that's a bit awkward the streets of Spain are very quiet at this time. Your father's house. That seems a bit personal, mate. Plan it's been raining a bit this morning, judging by the road. I hope there's no rain in the race. That would be useful. By the way, my budget for this entire trip is about 45 quid for spending money. Not including the hostel price, but for spending money, about 45 quid. So I got a be a little bit careful i'll be fine the fact that the train's like 280 euros each way two euros 80 cents that is not <laughs> 280 euros that's that's cheap and you can do the rest of it walking so i'm glad that barcelona is very convenient to the the actual circuit otherwise i would have been screwed but it will all be okay on tuesday that's when payday is you know yeah, that's annoying that is payday is on tuesday after i come back home but when that comes in it'll be okay because I've not been paid since I went to America, since before I went to America. So it's been, it's been too long. It's been a little too long. Although an issue is uh, my workplace is shutting down on July 20th. They announced this in March. Uh, so I, I'm hoping that one of the three companies I interviewed with uh, gives me an offer because time is running out. <laughs> so it might not be all alright, but I, I have good faith. All right, we are almost at the station. I'm finally seeing some F1 fans, that's more like it. I don't know what that is, but nice work. You know, I came to Barcelona when I was a kid in year nine, 2009, when I was in secondary school. That was quite cool. How in year nine, I was, it was 2009, like when you finish year nine, I was in the perfect year. But anyway, yeah, went on a school trip here with other school kids and it was the best holiday of my life until I started traveling two years ago. But nevertheless, we are here at Boston and Sand Station. I'm gonna go to the McDonald's and then I'll be off to the track, hopefully before the 10 a.m. Formula 3. I mean, we're very early for that anyway, uh, so we should be fine. But uh, looking forward to a great day. Obviously the main attraction is the F1, Forza Ferrari. I know Norris is starting P1, that's fine. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. Hopefully Ferrari can get a win at least, uh, or a one-two. Is that too much to ask for, or is Verstappen gonna win the race again? I don't know, but hopefully it's a good race. And hopefully Ferrari do well, and at least the podium would be nice. Okay, we don't, we don't have McRib in the UK. Interesting. Looks more like a KFC menu. Sorry, they sell meals of ice cream? That is elite. Triple chicken mayo, you can't be serious. That's, that, that's, that's too far, mate. Like extreme double cheddar egg. Well, it's like a different menu. It's more creative than the UK one. Chicken and cheese. They've even got different types of fries. You know what? McDonald's are clear in Spain. No thanks. Milky bar McFlurry. Why not? Never pickle. Never pickle. It is 6.30 in the morning and I have a water from McDonald's and a McFlurry. 
I have truly lost it, my friends. Vamos, Carlos. Christian recently Charles the player won in Monaco, and that was great. I want to see Sainz win here. But I've seen him win twice, you know, straight in Silverstone. But to see him win here would be amazing. Or Alonso, Alonso podium, that would be great. Stop. I love how you got a yellow F1 car as the advert. F1 has not got a yellow team. It should have one though. There's too many blue teams. Too many, it's like off the grid. So there's two directions, that way or up here. Then this way. getting there I see one of the grandstands there I'm in grandstand J which I'm pretty sure is on the main straight wow that's a lot of trash almost there so this is zone six I gotta find zone one I'm gonna do that you know what there's probably a way around I'm pretty sure the circuit is not like disconnected all right I'm gonna go into six it's easier it's more convenient over the bridge and into the track All right, grandstands. Well, my one's J, and J's not on the uh, list. I'm gonna go towards the fan zone, and I assume it's near there because I think the fan zone is on the main straight. I oh, never mind. I've, I got the right idea. <laughs> so uh, we got. Okay, I need. I want to get a cap. I want to get a cap specific to this track. I got it every track except the spa, spa one, because they never didn't have one there. But uh, J is that way, as I suspected. I assume not that way. So yeah, well, we're good. I think we're good. Got a lot of the green tires here. Yeah? Oh my days. Turn one is right there. There's a straight. I think I'm either in there or there. I, th I think I'm there. I'm somewhere across here. I think. You know what? The general admission looks pretty good because they got they got benches. Normally it's just you know just a piece of it's, it's just a field, a grass, a piece of grass or a road or whatever. I don't normally see benches in the. Uh, general admission area that's pretty cool i've never gone general admission just because like i prefer to have a have a seat instead of just coming in and just finding a perfect spot uh sit on the grass somewhere bring a camping chair because you can bring those in you can bring equipment in you can bring a chair in but still like i just prefer a guaranteed seat you know the grandstand but general admission is a lot cheaper so it's something i'm willing to try and maybe i'll try at some point i say at some point my dutch grand prix ticket is general admission so i will try it definitely by next year Maybe before. Maybe I might surprise you. Went the wrong way because there's F and then E. I'm just like, wait, I'm, I'm in J. But then I checked the map and it says, it goes F, E, K, then J. Yeah, I don't know how the letters work here. Yeah. Like that store, they haven't got a specific Spanish Grand Prix cap. That's a bit like, I've not seen one at all to be fair. Maybe, maybe it doesn't exist, just like in Spa. Found my grandstand, which is right here. According to the forecast, it was rain in the morning and uh, sun in the afternoon hopefully that's correct because i have no cover if it was rain that is cool you can see the uh pit lane through that happy to see it from there hopefully that's cool let some water refill brilliant pretty close to the stand that's convenient grandstand over is this main one here and uh there's a fan zone right there so i need some people there but yeah there's a zone right here hopefully i can find a decent cap but i don't i want I just want one that says spanish grand prix when I went to Spa, it's the same thing. I couldn't find one, but uh, we shall see. Should be enough stores here to at least have something. And I gotta get some water. That was new, but it's just a general F1 shirt. <laughs> thought it might have been, but it wasn't. What's Gilets? It's too hot for that, mate. <laughs> I'm not sure who's buying that. To be fair, people come here from all over the world, so they might need it. I need it in, uh, in December, November, just even past September, but ain't got the budget, mate. Ain't got the budget. I got the budget for a cap, though. <laughs> 
Finally a walk in shop. Yeah, it doesn't exist. It's not there either. It, it definitely doesn't exist. I'm walking around looking for a cab as if one shop will have it, but they mostly sell the same thing, so what am I expecting? Oh, to be fair, there's a store here specific to the track. That might be different merchandise. The stage there, I don't know who's performing, but that is for concerts. And uh, here we are at the track store. I spotted something, it's an Ayrton Senna cab. In the shop, which is over there. Uh, yeah, there's something in there. Uh, there's a few caps. It's, uh, I mean, it shows the track, the map of the track on the front, which is nice. And then it says uh, Circuit and Barcelona. Circuit and Barcelona. So it doesn't, it doesn't say Spanish Grand Prix. It doesn't say Circuit de Catalunya, which is the actual name. It says Circuit and California. No, sorry, Circuit and Barcelona. That's not the track name, but screw it, I might buy it. I should have pit walk on Thursday, I was invited to it, but I didn't go, because obviously I wasn't here yet. Um, but yeah, here it is. So we got F3 at 10.05, F2 at 11.35. Then you got driver's parade at one o'clock. Um, then you got the F1 national anthem, of course, and the race three to five. We've got circuit and Barcelona here. This one is good to be fair. Barcelona on the back, it's got that, and it's got um, the track name right there. This is the one I, one I saw earlier as well. So it could be faster than that. There's a lot of bad options here. Good colours. Oh yeah, this one. I feel like it looks the best. Yeah, it's great. It works for me. Right, that's sorted. They gave me a fresh one too, straight out of the packaging, so that's brilliant. So right next to here, we got an express drink station. Now that is good. Yeah, well, mate, three dollars, three euros of water. To be fair, there are refill stations, so it's still worth buying because I can still get like three drinks. Start and just scans it here. Fast lane. What's on earth? I think called F1 Academy going right now. Could watch a bit of that. All right. Going in. The toilets just underneath the grandstand, which is very good. Uh, no food places though. At Spa, they had food places inside the grandstand, which is awesome. But uh, I'll definitely accept that. If only there were fountains too, that would be useful. I don't think there is. Anyway, I'm towards the end. I'm in zone one. One to four right there. So let's get in. Went the wrong way. It's up here. There's a barrier between row 11. There's a barrier on row 11. So you've got to take these stairs to get to row 12 onwards. Yeah, the barrier's there and you can't go up there. You've got to come up these stairs. Bloody cool seat, mate. I'm gonna see turn one, and of course the finish and pit exit. That should be interesting. If someone's just coming out, there's a car coming. Race to the corner. Now these are incredible seats. Look at the German mission crowd. They are keen. They want to get the right spot. There they are. Off you go, people. I see him there as well.
started raining towards the end of the race, right at the end. Uh, it's still dripping a bit. It's only light rain, not even light rain. It's just, it is still raining as well. Just a few little drops here and there. Hopefully not too heavy. I did see the forecast. It said rain until around, it, it said rain in the morning and then the rest of the day sun. Uh, rain is a bit later than the forecast said. Hopefully, hopefully that's not the case when the race comes around for the F1. Uh, but we've got a few hours till then. It's only not right light rain for now, but I guess you never know. There could be a, a road cloud somewhere. But uh, yeah, that was a fun race. Uh, there was a car in Red Bull livery uh, winning the race comfortably. It looks very familiar, but uh, yeah, it was a good race. Um, and it was a good position to see like turn one in a way, because like you had to like get up and probably like reach and see. You can still see it. Not the clearest view compared to the stands that have been near turn one, closer to turn one. But uh, still, you get to see a good view into turn one. A lot of overtakes happen there. One of the best things to see in person in F1 is overtake. So you see a lot of opportunities to overtake uh, for the big DRS. So so that's a bit of fun. Uh, there was a couple of parts where a couple of drivers got run off the track, uh, got hit and went off the track. So that was pretty fun to see. I didn't get, didn't get it on video, but uh, it was pretty crazy. Uh, but yeah, it was, uh, it was good stuff. So I'm looking forward to F2 now. And then obviously we've got the main event. Food places, they obviously food is there everywhere around the track. Uh, most of them seem to be just be burgers and hot dogs. Hot burger and fries, there's, there's a thing called classic burger, 13 euros with fries. Hot dogs. Most of the places around here just sell pretty much the same things. So, yeah, I'm not feeling hungry yet though. I'm not feeling hungry yet. I, I think after a driver's parade, I think that's the sweet spot. Then there could be long queues. Should be alright. I sat in the wrong seat. I sat like down there. I'm like on this side. My bad.
Okay, so uh, those t-shirts I just showed you, um, I couldn't get a clear shot, but on the back it says, Fernando is faster than you. I like that, I kind of want one of those. Anyway, yeah, um, that was fun. There was a crash at the end, uh, two teammates collided. Part of one of the, one of the cars, part of the cars fell off. Um, so yeah, I was just like, oh no. <laughs> Parts of the car flying off by your own teammate, that is, uh, that's unfortunate. It was a good race, uh, plenty of pit stops, uh, plenty of interesting overtakes. Uh, it was really cool seeing overtakes in turn one again. Obviously you gotta like look really far in, but I can get a, a view of it still. Um, I sat in the wrong seat like four times, I was like, no, twice, twice. I sat in the wrong seat first, I told you about that. I was actually in zone two, I was meant to be in zone one, seat one, which is actually right in the corner. And I, I sat in zone two, I'm just like, oh, wait a second. Oh, yeah, that was a bit, that was a bit uh, embarrassing, but uh, we got there in the end. Uh, so yeah, the view is still pretty damn good. Uh, the only issue is the damn barrier right next to me bloody I'm worried about dropping my phone through there from, from filming it <laughs> and uh, on top of that it's just you know it's a bit cramped in there that's the only thing like if I was like a, even one seat across would have been fine uh, but yeah apart from that like people stand up anyway to uh, to see everything so like it's not like it's not like a view issue there's no view issue but you can just see everything anyway but yeah sitting down it can be a bit limited into turn one you've got definitely got to get up but everyone else gets up anyway so it's gonna be fun for the F1. Uh, there's plenty of Aston Martin fans here. I think that's a most supported team, which I've not seen yet at any track. But obviously they got Fernando Alonso, who's obviously a Spaniard. Uh, and you got Carlos Sainz, who's for Ferrari. So you got plenty of Ferrari as well. And then you got a decent amount of McLaren. I actually don't see that much Mercedes or Red Bull, which is unusual, because normally you see a lot of both. The only thing is I can't hear the commentary. Normally you can hear like there's track commentary, which you can hear normally on the speakers the speakers where i'm sitting are not loud enough like you kind of hear it sometimes but most of the time you don't i'm just like ah okay so we got the screens we got the view just not the commentary but yeah that's fine at least we got like we got a whole board with like the top 10 positions which is brilliant that's going to be perfect for me when i'm watching uh, but i can't wait like i'm, I'm going to see some good overtakes for sure i can tell you that much but i don't know how much i can film it because like I can film it, it's just that getting the angle on the camera and watching it myself, it's a bit tricky. I tried it in one corner in F2, I don't even know if the video worked out fine, but uh, I'll try and get you some shots, but no promises. <laughs> it's just that it's so hard to film into that corner because it's so far ahead. I can see, but the camera, I, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. But yeah, driver's parade is next, and then we're straight into the F1. Uh, driver's parade is at 1 to 1.30. Uh, Spanish Alpha is at 246 and 3 pm race. Um, so I should be in my seat by 2 30. I want to try and get up at 2 30, try to, like last minute. Um, just hang around here. For the driver's parade, I'm just going to pop through there, pop, pop through the lower tier and just look at it from the barricade. Um, I, I need to see like a couple minutes of that anyway. And then uh, I'll get a hot dog over there and we're all set. all I needed to see for now just like most people here it was literally just like 30 seconds now I've got like 1 hour 40 to get food get some more water and uh, then we're ready for the race main event time I can't wait I don't know man well I mean there's so many stores they have the same menu I just feel like other tracks have more range in terms of food but regardless I found my choice. Oscar Mayer genuine hot dog. It better be genuine. Self-service. Good enough. That looks lively. Right here hiding in the corner is Grand Pizzella. Italian pizza. I could have come here. Hot dog was alright. It wasn't hot enough to be honest. But it tasted fine. It tastes like a hot dog. It was genuine, I guess. 
this wasn't like a leech. If I knew this pizza place was right here, I would have come here. Found a spot. I love how everyone just sitting on rocks or these or the steps, the metal steps, or over there, which is even better actually. That's the best place to be. There's people just sleeping on the, on the grass. Some people without mats. I love how everyone just just chilling outside the stand, even though we got we all got allocated seats. But to be fair, the seats are not that comfortable. <laughs> I can tell you that my days they're not comfortable to sit on. I'm very glad I'm gonna get up like every lap to see the cars go because. Those seats, they hurt a little bit. To be honest, they hurt a little bit. And cramped in that corner on top of that, ah, uh, my days. Nice and hot, nice and hot. So that's good, good for the race as well. Um, I'm very intrigued to see how it goes. Hopefully a Ferrari win. And hopefully it's Carlos Sainz. That would be amazing as well in front of the home crowd. Also, this might be the second last Barcelona Spanish Grand Prix because they're introducing a new track in Spain. In Madrid is a street circuit. So I think that's replacing this one. So if that's the case, then uh, I guess I made a good timing to do it this year, even though I didn't even plan it. I want to see what the Madrid, Madrid circuit is like first before judging, but if it's a track that looks good to me, then I guess you never know, you might see me there in a few years. But I wouldn't go to the first one though, just I'd, I'd leave off it for a bit. Because like I wanted to go to Miami, but then I saw the track, then I saw the race, I'm just like, nah, I don't want to go there. What I definitely do want to do is the Dodge Grand Prix, obviously, I got a ticket for next year, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, the Red Bull Ring would be amazing to do as well, obviously that's next week, uh, but yeah, that's, that's a little too soon. Um, and Texas, I want to do Texas for sure. Um, the Vegas one I love to do, but Vegas is too expensive. Uh, Texas is actually a bit more reasonable compared to Vegas. So I'd love to do the Texas one, and it's a great track. For me, it's the best American one, and one of the best tracks in the, on the F1 calendar, in my opinion. It's, for me, it's top five. I love Texas, so I'd love to do that one. And Singapore, Singapore, I'd love to do, but I'm pretty sure that's very expensive. So, uh, but I guess we'll see. But that's on my bucket list. Uh, those are the tracks I want to do. Uh, also Brazil, but like Brazil and Mexico. But like those are like I don't know if I'm I don't know if it's safe for me to go on my own to Brazil or Mexico to watch F1, I don't know. I need to work out the logistics of that. The tracks I have done <laughs> is what I should focus on more because uh, I've done a lot. I've, I've like ticked off a lot uh, as what an F1 fan would want to do, especially Ferrari fans. So. Monza, Spa, Silverstone, Albert Park, and now Catalonia. That's a good list. And Monaco in Formula E, that's, that's, a, that's an incredible list. Incredible list. Glad I brought this made in Australia, you know, that's, that's when you know it's good. <laughs> that's Superman.
everyone is getting ready to track in Bade. I was kind of hoping that would be an entrance, but it's not. But uh, <laughs> that was fun. You can see the VIPs. They're caught with the balloons and stuff. Jeez. Nearly missed the fireworks. Max wins again. Despite Mustafa winning as usual, you know, the rest of the race was pretty competitive. Even Norris, you know, Chad did challenge Max for a little bit to an extent. But you had two Mercedes getting third and fourth, so that's not too bad. Uh, Ferrari probably would have liked a better day. Fifth and sixth is uh, really not up to standard there. For the home driver, Sainz, he finished sixth. Not not the great race for him. Uh, Piastri, seventh, also not the, great, not the greatest of days or weekends. Perez, well, I mean, I don't need to say anything. Then you got the two Alpines, ninth and tenth. Uh, no Alonso, he was tenth, he started tenth. He fought back to get there, but he slipped away again, unfortunately. So yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't hear the commentary during the race, unfortunately, unlike I do at other tracks. Uh, but uh, we kept track of it enough, especially with this board. And uh, we had the two screens anyway. It was just hard to see what lap it was actually, but apart from that, <laughs> aside from the commentary, it was uh, a nice experience. It was a fun race in general. I really enjoyed it, apart from Fry not doing so well. Um, I had a good time still. Just looking every single lap, looking that way, into the direction of turn one was really fun. Uh, we saw a lot of overtakes. Unfortunately, the best overtakes on turn one, I couldn't, I didn't go on camera because I wasn't going to film every single lap. I wanted to just enjoy myself as well. Um, I just filmed on the wrong, on the wrong laps, essentially. Um, I did get some close action, but no proper overtakes into the corner. There were some really good ones. Obviously, in the Spanish Grand Prix, you got the long straight with DRS, and then you got the overtaking point into turn one. There's a lot of overtakes that happen in, on the straight and into turn one. I didn't capture any, I don't think. I may have captured one or two, I can't remember. But none of the best ones anyway. Um, so it is what it is in that regard. I recorded a lot in the first like 10 laps, uh, especially with my other camera, my Canon. Um, and I recorded quite a bit of the last five laps or something. Uh, in the middle, on and off, on and off. I was also kind of worried because I'm right here. I wanted to drop my phone, but I was fine. That was fine. But uh, yeah, I feel like I got a decent amount and I, some good close-ups because my Canon can zoom in 17 times. So. We saw some really close ups, that was my digital camera. Um, so I'm glad it had its use. I've still got clips from Spa and Silverstone last year on that camera. So that's pretty cool to look back and compare. Uh, but yeah, I just love watching. I love listening to the cars, even the pit stop. The pit stop, whatever equipment they use, it's so loud. I'm surprised. I mean, I heard it at Monza as well, how loud it was, but like, it's actually ridiculously loud. It's crazy. Only the cars are louder than that. But yeah, um, just hearing the cars is amazing. Just seeing them whiz past you at 200 miles an hour is just insane because down the straight it's full speed it's and obviously you're overtaking and stuff drivers are going to put it flat out see the witness the speed of it is uh, absolutely incredible down the straight and uh yeah good to see some great overtakes and uh, yeah this is why i do it. I, I love watching uh, f1 in person and uh, I hope this is not the last, uh, might be the last this year, but I mean, no, it's not. I'm going to Silverstone. I mean, that's not really a spoiler. I literally told you guys I want to go every single year. Unless I tell you otherwise, I won't be there. Oh, track invasion can be done through here. I might just go there. I, I, I don't, I'm not bothered about getting to the podium, to be honest, but uh, yeah, track invasion, let's go. Yeah, I, I cannot wait to watch more in person in future, even if it's just Silverstone. But I'm, I'm in Dodge Grand Prix next year, so we got that. Hopefully Texas too. Hopefully Texas too. Let me get down there. There is a shortcut, right? Everyone got to go round and round there. I think there's a way through the end. For tip's sake, you gotta, uh, you gotta go round. Brilliant. That, my friends, is why everyone left the stands before the race even ended. There's all the Mercedes fans. I, didn't, I, I swear I didn't see like 90% of these people like all day. <laughs> There they are. I still, still don't see the Red Bulls. I do see some Red Bulls throughout the day, but like not that many. But I see all the yellow hats there. Yeah. They're out in force. They finished third and fourth. They've just spawned. There's that way. Or there's climb over this. Staying here for now. <laughs> Great timing. Where's Lewis over there, bro? Get in the action.
body's aching, bro. I was leaning vertically on this, <laughs> getting over. But I got over, it's just that my belly hurts now. It was worth it though, because I haven't had to touch the track. Can you see the names from there? I don't think you can. No, you can. Thumb, I don't know if this will be the thumbnail twist, but it's one of the, one of the car clips in it, but still. Ah, Spain. Been there, done that. One thing I love about F1 events is no matter where in the world you go to, to watch one, you will find people, not only from the country that you're in, but people from all over the world will go and go to the race. All over the world, you know, people will come to these races and they'll mix in just fine with the people from the country that the race is in. I just love how I bring people together, no matter where you are and no matter what race you go to, you're gonna find people who are traveling to see it, so that's awesome. I, lo I love that vibe. And uh, the home fans always are great too, even in, especially in Spain. The Spanish fans around me, they were great. That was, was amazing. I think there's actually logs, not benches. They would have meant to be there, but yeah, they're tree logs, I'm pretty sure. Almost at the exit I came in, and there should be an easier walk since it's downhill. But I think I remember the directions. So I walked quite far, actually. It's in there, in that corner behind the tree. I know it's because there's a DHL there, and it's opposite the station, so like... It's like right down there, and I saw the train line. That is far. Yeah, I can't figure out, can't figure out when the station is, but I think the train line is just there. 30 to 40 minute walk as far as I know, as far as I remember. Damn. Oh, I avoided the crowd. I think I did. This is the pre-crowd. On the right track. As far as I remember, just go down, follow the road, go down the hill, turn right on the bridge, go straight to see the shops, the schools, turn right, straight down Montmelo Station. I remember, I remember. the train so we've missed this one we'll pick out the next one but oh, there it is there you go got crepes here where's the option at the, at the track just got a funny notification from my phone my phone just told me my phone just told me that i have reached 400 percent of my daily move goal so 400 four times the amount of steps I should target a day I did today. Still got more walking to go as well. It's a nice little town. The people that live here, if they're F1 fans, they are very fortunate to live near such an iconic track. The hostel right here. Hostel Terra. And voila, the train station is right down there. She had the help of the, all the crowd coming this way, but they did split up like three or four times, so I still remember the directions. It's actually quite a nice walk. To be fair, the weather does help. It's quite warm and it's quite cool at the same time. It's got a breeze. Um, it wouldn't be nice on a rainy day, but still, on a regular day in Spain, nice walk. Very nice walk. Oh boy, this isn't even moving. The time is 5.40 p.m. Really? Six eighteen p.m. inside the station, waiting to get to the platform. So more than half an hour, more than half an hour from waiting in the queue until now, not including the walk to get here as well. So more like an hour I've been since the track. Six thirty-four. We 
are back at Barcelona Sand Station. It is now 7.13, so uh, 5.42. That was half, after the half an hour walk to the station. 5.42, waited half an hour in that queue. And then I didn't take the first train because I wanted to get a seat. Got the second train, I got a seat. So it was worth the wait. And uh, it took an hour, 45 minutes to get back uh, just from waiting in that queue. So it's actually not, it took over two hours to get back, uh, which is pretty crazy. It didn't feel as hectic as Melbourne did. Melbourne was a lot of stopping, but that was like little trams. There's like a big train, but it took a while still. So, but that's it. You know, when you take, when you take public transport to uh, F1 races, hundreds of thousands of people, you've got to expect that. Two things about the F1 again. Um, it was cool to see a lot of Renault shirts. Obviously, a, a lot of people will be fans of Fernando Alonso. More Alonso fans than science fans. Um, so there was plenty of Aston Martin. Plenty of Ferrari also for science as well, of course, but of course of Alonso's Ferrari is free, you'd have that as well. There were also quite a few light blue Renault t-shirts and I thought that was really cool because they're long gone. I mean, they're still there. They're called Alpine now, but that, that, was, that was a dodgy rebrand. They should go back to Renault. Like, people liked them back then. No one likes Alpine, but <laughs> that's a different discussion. But I do remember Renault and I, li I remember liking them quite a lot, even though they're still there technically. It's nice to see remnants of that because I never see those shirts anywhere, but I see them here. And the Alonso influence is the reason for that, so that's pretty cool. Also, um, every car finished. A few cars got lapped, so obviously if you get lapped, you, fin you race less laps. But either way, no crashes. It's a very clean race, the cleanest race I've seen live. No crashes, um, a few bits of contact, um, but no damage to anyone. Someone went up the track, I think, but again, no damage, uh, no safety cars, no virtual safety cars. Definitely no red flags. No yellow flags either, I don't think. I don't think there was anything that disrupted the race. I think it was just straight racing the entire time. Which is like, that's like unheard of in F1. But I'm, unless I'm missing something, but I feel like everyone, I feel like no one crashed. It was that clean. Uh, so yeah, that was, uh, I just thought I'd point it out because that's unusual. So another thing, at the start of this vlog, I mentioned there were no flights late enough. There's a Ryanair flight at 10 p.m. It's sold out now, but there's a Ryanair flight at 10 p.m. I would have made it, but when I looked, like in December, I got my tickets to this Grand Prix and then I went went to the flights. I wanted to get the flights sorted out. I didn't wait too off too long. I waited a few days and I sorted out the flights. I think next payday I sorted out the flights because I wanted to just get it sorted out just in case it's sold out because F1 is popular, right? When I looked on the flights, I looked on Expedia, I looked on British Airways app, I looked on Ryanair app, EasyJet, I looked at all the places that you'd look to to, uh, to to fly to Spain. I didn't see any flights after 8.30. I saw like flights up to 8.30, a lot of flights like 8, 8.30, I think there's one at 9 as well actually, there's one at 9. But like between like half 7 and 9, there was a lot of flights to London. And I was just like, that's not, that's, too, that's way too risky. Because either I missed a flight or I just about make it wasn't worth the risk so that's why i didn't do it i'm just like okay i'll fly on saturday then but there's a ryanair flight at 10 but like i booked the ryanair flight to get here so like i would have seen it no did they add that flight to the schedule i don't know i feel like i've been hard, hard done by it. and on top of that yeah i mean i already searched anyway the morning flights i knew there were good ones uh, there were flights leaving for spain at like 6 7 a.m would have got there like uh, 10 11 a.m that would have been fine. I would have missed the F2 and the F3, but I would have been able to see the race and go home just, just like Monza two years ago. So I would have been able to do that. So like, if I knew there was going to be a Ryanair flight at 10 p.m. back home, I would have done it. I actually would have done it because I've done day trips before and I did it for Monza for the F1 and Mon Monaco for Formula E as well. Damn. It is what it is. Instead, I fly home tomorrow at 9.15 and uh, that would be in this vlog, obviously. They're closed. How are they closed? Only half seven. I was going to nip in again get a McFlurry, but anyway, um, I'm going to get up probably like 4 a.m., get out of the hostel quickly, uh, just go chill at the airport because uh, I'm struggling to sleep there anyway. And uh, on top of that, like, my alarm has never sounded so loud. Like, my alarm at 5 a.m., I don't know how to make it run up. It sounded the loudest, like, loudest thing ever. I'm just like, I didn't, I didn't never knew this was this loud, but my alarm sounded so loud. 
this morning I'm just like I'm glad I woke up straight away and I turned it off within like five seconds which never happens to me like ever I always sleep through like 10 alarms but yeah <laughs> I kind of want to just hopefully my alarm at 4am doesn't wake anyone up I'm gonna go to bed early anyway I'll miss the Euros games but screw it I'll watch the highlights tomorrow I am knackered anyway I was feeling the tiredness like towards the last 10 laps of the F1 I was starting to feel it I was just like oh the lack of sleep last night is, is starting to kick in I don't want to drink coffee or Red Bull now because that's going to keep me awake all night but uh yeah it's been a fun Barcelona like flurries in a day this guy's truly gone mad my choice is Willard, Biscoff or Kit Kat they love setting fireworks off on the street for some reason I don't know why but I got a Kit Kat one because I had Biscoff recently in England so I thought I'd get Kit Kat Looks all right. Looks kind of like Biscoff, to be honest. Now, a friend of mine at work, he always eats food. Whatever food you think of, fast food, takeaways. This guy eats so much every single day. So much sugar, so much oil. I'm just like, I don't know how this guy even lives. And you should see him, like, he's he, he's so skinny. I'm just like, what's what's going on? I mean, <laughs> this guy might die, by, but he, but he looks the hell, he looks very healthy. I'm not gonna name him, obviously. I'm not. I'm not here to dox people, but uh, he knows who he is. He might watch this vlog. Um, I've turned into you, mate, for a day. Except I'm a lot bigger, and I eat a lot less than you. That's metabolism. I didn't see the KFC right behind me. Unfortunately, I'm not the guy I, re I reference from my workplace because uh, he would do that. He would go to McDonald's, have a meal, then go in there. That's what he would do. Uh, but. I'm not that hungry or that crazy. Barcelona Stadium, Camp Nou is about 10 minutes walk that way. But I am that tired. I need to go to bed. There's a metro station right here near my hostel. Instead of doing the walk, I might just, uh, assuming it's, if, 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 it, if it's operating at like 5 a.m., I might take this and uh, take the metro to Barcelona de Sants, then get the train back to the airport, which I got a ticket for. That's the plan. There is water bottles here at the hotel for a euro each. <sighs> That's my fault. Well, you can't see me, but for the refill bottle, I put three euro bottle at the track. I did refill it twice though, so I had three, I had three bottles worth for over three euros, so that's all right. At McDonald's though, I bought two bottles of water for 165 each, and they were one dollar at this hostel. Why am I an idiot? <laughs> It's 5.21 a.m. and uh, here I am outside the hostel. Hostel was fine, um, just not a big fan of shared rooms, everyone coming and coming out and shared bathrooms, shared toilets, shared showers. I mean, you don't go in the same time, obviously, but still, um, I prefer my own privacy. Uh, but still, like, you know, the advantage of the hostels is you get to socialize with people. Um, for me, it was mainly just the people at the reception, to be honest, because uh, the, the guy's an F1 fan who works during the day, so that, that was cool. Um, he noticed my Ferrari gear when I came back in, um, but yeah, um, yeah, everyone was quiet though, all the people in the room were very quiet, um, like me I guess, so I understand. Uh, last night they had people talking, heard that there was an Australian guy and a guy from Sevilla, I'm just like, people who talk start coming in when I'm going, ah oh, my days, the timing of that. Anyway, um, on Saturdays and public holidays, uh, the metro runs 24 hours which is cool. Uh, apparently Monday's a big public holiday for Spain uh, today. Um, so I can get on the, I could have left two hours ago and I would have been fine. Um, I'm a bit confused though, because some websites are saying terminal one, others are saying terminal two. So I'm just like, which one do I go to then? <laughs> Either way, there is a Metro. The thing is right. I can go there without taking the uh, main train, but that's a different ticket. I got return ticket to the main train, but that's not as often. So then what, I mean, it starts at 5.12 that one anyway, but it's like every half an hour to every hour. So it's like, it's quite long. 
I'll go and ask them if uh, my ticket could be valid for Metro because you know I'm just I'm just a tourist. But anyway, yeah, uh, let's head off and uh, yeah, Broadway also F1. I watched some clips yesterday of like post post race interviews and stuff. I saw um, Max and Lewis vibing because everyone well, their fans hate each other and everyone thinks they hate each other. I never. Like, I think they hate driving against each other, that's about it. I don't think they actually hate each other. But yeah, it was funny seeing Max walk into the interview room and Lewis is just lying down on the sofa. Max is like, he's getting old, you need a massage, they're having a, a bit of banter. And then Norris comes in, they have an interview. Norris is answering a question and Lewis gets his phone out, takes a selfie with all three of them. It's good vibes, it's good vibes. Especially after what happened in 2021, it's good to see Lewis and Max bantering, you know, <laughs> with Norris in the middle. On the other hand though, Ferrari, my team, the two drivers are bickering amongst each other. It's just, I mean, Sainz got nothing to lose uh, because he's losing his Ferrari seat. Um, Charles has had a bad weekend all round. It's not a good look for Ferrari this weekend, I'll tell you that much. Um, hopefully it improves uh, in Austria and at Silverstone especially because um, I'll be there watching our home race. You know, I, I said yesterday that um, I should have done the day trip because there was the flights, but I didn't see the flights. But then again, F2 and F3 were fun, and I would have missed those otherwise, so maybe it was better flying in Saturday. Regardless, it's time to go. It was a separate ticket. Wrong platform, I gotta go up these, that was a platform there. Gotta go up the escalators uh, to another platform. I was wondering, where, where's my train? Why is it delayed? This is the wrong train. Ah, a different platform. It's a bit far, mate. Another one. My days. Bro, third one. <laughs> number four. Number five. <laughs> number six. I wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it, mate. Let me tell you something, my friends. I bought the wrong ticket. I accidentally bought a ticket that excludes the airport. There's like two specific ones, just two separate ones. One includes the airport, one doesn't. So uh, I'm gonna go. I got off at El Stacio something uh this station actually i can get the overground train back to the terminal unfortunately that train goes back to terminal two i need to get to terminal one so they got to get back on this underground train metro but i do not have the budget for the euro fines if i get caught with the wrong ticket so i don't want to risk that i'm gonna go out buy the actual ticket and get back in i thought hey two two, two euros fifty so cheap ah uh, it's not the airport one <laughs> of course it is it's, it's like, it is one journey though. One journey anyway includes that, ex, just excludes that airport, but it is what it is. Let's see how much more the airport one is. Ah, uh, three euros more, of course. <laughs> Aeropuerto T1. Direction to Airport T1. Only got that many stops left, so we're good. It's the last stop. It is 6:20, so just under three hours to my flight. Just under two and a half until my uh, boarding. Through the gates. It's currently 6.36. 8.45 is boarding, 9.15 is the flight. I assume a lot earlier to drop my luggage, so let me go and do that. If I didn't have to drop luggage, then I'd be a lot calmer, but I mean, I'm calm anyway, I'm good. I'm, I'm relaxed. A lot more relaxed compared to uh, missing my flight in America last year. That was uh, a real, that was down bad, that was. I mentioned how in English airports there's so many W.A. Smiths, and in Australia, I saw it in America, even in Egypt. You can't escape it in Spain either. I know they sell things that are convenient to airports, but still, it just it irritates me that there's so many of them and like, 
so many airports, especially in England. But then you can't escape it when you go abroad either. And 15 Madrid, co-chaired with Qatar, British Airways and a few airlines. Seems like a lot of connections are going through this. By the way, I had a data signal down there. You saw how many escalators went down, like that far underground we had the signal. And then yet when I went in a, yesterday's train, right, that's a not, a, not a metro underground train. Whenever it went in a tunnel, I got no signal, but you get signal that far underground. How does that work? This is adrenaline. This way to get it. What, is it free? Nah, probably not, mate. It's like it is. Wait, why is there two for Madrid with the same flight number? I'm so confused, which one do I go to then? I'm gonna go 301 to 307 instead of 902 to 903, I hope that's right. That's, that's a problem, that's a big problem. In, we are ready to go. So it's 7.44, there was about a 50 minute wait, 5-0, so it took a while. Uh, but I eventually I wasn't as worried as before because they were starting to call out people from certain flights Not for my flight, but like there was some of like um, Departing in like 55 minutes and they said flight number they were calling out people in the queue Like if you've got a flight number come forward So I would have been fine anyway, I think um, But yeah, as soon as I got to like the barricade area um, All the priority had already done and there was like another clue. There was like uh, Some sort of club, but there was another queue um, and that finished as well. So it went from two people organizing that entire queue to eight people and then it started moving a bit faster. So we're through and uh, as far as I know, I get my luggage in London. It is checked to London. Uh, so that is good. But yeah, I've got a 90 minute layover in Madrid and uh, then we are off uh, home. So uh, that is good. I'm going to double check with the at boarding if I get my luggage in London. I think it should be fine anyway. But um, yeah. On my way to security, I can't film security, but uh, I will be okay. Just over an hour to the flight though, so I need to hurry up. Barcelona Airport is nice. Now it's that security, I realized I had a bottle in my bag. I'm just like, oh, I gotta drink that. I was like rushing to, because it was my turn next to put my stuff on the tray. So I was putting stuff on the tray while gulping water. Uh, no spillages, security went smooth anyway. No stress. So uh, apart from the drinking water immediately, because there was a bin before security, not after. So I was just like, okay, recycle bin behind me. Let me just do it quickly. It was all good. All good. Got to get to a gates. Kind of supermarket. I never see what goes in airports. There is an outside waiting area. That's awesome. I don't normally see those at airports. A01. <laughs> A1 is code for something at my workplace. So it's like it's telling me to go back to work and I'm going back to work today. A very uh, premium vending machine. You've got a meal deal here, you've got water, hot dog and crisps. Here you got Airbion in a can. Saves on plastic I guess. But 115 or 33 mate. Uh, Red Bull. They won yesterday, of course. There is a good menu restaurant, to be fair. You've got sushi there, you got that. U2 Entertainment Place. I'm a big fan of the range at this airport. In for four minutes to Madrid. Bloody hurry up, mate. There it is, AO4. Oh my days, my nemesis. Even in Spain, there's more than one in their airports. Ten minutes till boarding. Gonna snoop around David Smith a bit, see if there's something to eat. Wow, they got prime. Honestly. Nothing here looks appetizing to me. Literally nothing. <laughs> I'm in group three. I'm ready to go.
The leg room looks fine, but because there's no laptop in there, I can squeeze my bag a bit. That's great. Ready to go to Madrid for now? Then to London. I actually slept, slept quite well last night compared to the night before. I think I got like double behind sleep. I think I slept like seven, eight hours, despite waking up so early. But, uh, you know, I think it was seven. I think it was definitely seven. Um, but I'm surprised that I woke up before the alarm at like 4 a.m. How does that even happen? Surely before helping children or others who might need your assistance. Just got out. I've got to head to Terminal 4S. Currently in Terminal 4. What's the difference? I don't know. I forgot how big Madrid's airport really was. <laughs> it is 10:51. Uh, scheduled departure time. No, scheduled arrival time was 10:40. Um, we left a little bit later. Then uh, I think I don't know how long how much later it was. Might have been 10 minutes. Might have been more. But we landed like we landed at 10:26. We landed quite early. Uh, despite taking off late, but the taxi was so long and then they was getting off the plane, but yeah, we're fine. My flight's at 12.10. I just got to make sure I get to the terminal and to my gate in time. As far as I know, my luggage is being checked. Through. I mean, I saw the label, it said Heathrow, so uh, we should be fine there. Uh, but you never know, the last time I lost my suitcase, it was that suitcase and it was on a connection flight. So that was in Paris though, but... Yeah, ho hopefully that's not a bad omen. Hopefully not. London S19. All right, now I know where I'm going. But a 23 minute walk. Right work, mate. Should have seen the steps I did yesterday. So we got to get on the train. If you can't maintain distancing on the train, okay. take the lift unless you need it. There's a shortcut. There's European EU passports only for the right escalator. Like since when do you prioritize escalators? Like what on earth is that about? Flipping EU priority escalators. Like what's up with that? Like seriously. I hope this works because I do have a connection. Worked because my second flight is so soon. I get, I get to go. This is cool. I avoided a massive like one hour long queue. I feel special. That was so quick. That was so cool. Uh, it says seven minutes walk to the S gates. Don't know how far much further for S19, but we're on track. It's 11:27. Boarding time 7:30. Flight departures 12:15. So no time to linger around. Wait, my power bank from like full charge yesterday it charged it from 17% to 80%. I take it off that because if it overheats too much, it doesn't charge above 80%, it's a waste of battery. And then I charged it again from like 55 to 80. And it was still on three bars. I'm just like, that's elite. <laughs> I've not even charged this power bank uh, since arriving in Spain. And it's bloody lasting this long. It's uh, keeping my phone awake now. And obviously I've got work later, so that escalated bollocks was rubbish. EU only, everyone else, including Americans and stuff longer queue separate escalator so i'm so glad i got that connection queue i don't think i've ever seen that i mean i don't do connections that much but like to have a specific line for connections and to get through it i was in like the fifth, fifth in line 
just walk through this entire long queue. Elite, elite. All right, I think that means it's closer. I see it, it's right there. You can't hear it, but literally it's next to S20. I need the toilet. Well, that's a pretty interesting uh, vending machine. I mean, fair enough. People need these things. We're almost at the home stretch. I haven't got a window seat, by the way. Three dollars, three euros, sorry, for those Pringles. Uh, don't know what that is, I assume. I mean, I don't I know what it is, I just mean like the brand. Not the best choices of sandwiches. What on earth is that monster flavor? I saw a coconut Red Bull the other day. I'm just like, the world's gone mad, mate. You've got, I assume, another Spanish delicacy. Uh, you've got these big M&Ms, this big bar. There's some good options, you know, that's tempting. What on earth is that? I'm trying to figure this out. What on earth is that? Pretzels? I'm so confused. You see, this is bad uh, marketing. I'm not going to know what that is. How are you going to get me to buy that? You can't sell that to me. Honestly, I'm going to wait to actually start boarding before I get in the queue. I'm still getting on the plane anyway, so. That's 772 I had on the post office travel card from two years ago. I had uh, 192 left and these are 180, these water bottles, the rest are 220 and the, everything else, the food is like, there's chewing gum for 2 euros, the rest is like minimum 290. Um, so I thought, hey, I got 192, there's got to be something. Yeah, there's a bottle of water, so at least I got that. So now I've got 12 pence left on that card. <laughs> Can't buy anything with that. Boarding at 11.55. Let's do this. I mean, priority group one is 11.55. I'm in group four. We're definitely gonna be departing late. We'll allow your fellow passengers on board and help us get away as quickly as possible. Just with a blue tag must be placed into the overhead lockers. Any items without a blue tag must be placed under the seat in front of you. Thank you. So traveling on so many different trips in the last two years, just over two years, most of you know, I'll, I'll actually like update you very soon on how many planes I've taken. There'll be a vlog about that. Um, give it about a week, week and a half, and you'll see a vlog about that. But anyway, I've flown on a lot of planes, seen a lot of different delays, different reasons. I saw a new reason today, which I did not expect. Uh, a reason, the reason that we were delayed, like 32 minutes, not just because we were late to board, but on top of that, we were delayed because the pushback team had not turned up yet. The pushback team, the team has got to push the plane back through to taxi out. Yeah, they didn't turn up to, do, to work yet or something. And maybe they were at work just at a different plane or whatever. Either way, they weren't there. They hadn't turned up yet when they were supposed to. New type of delay. Anyway, we uh, the, the plane left at two from, from it pushed back was at 12.42. Obviously takeoff time 12.10, so already running late. After takeoff, the plane actually left the ground at 1.03. Uh, that'll be 12.03 UK time. And uh, we landed at, landed at 2.05 and it is now 2.28. Um, so yeah, just wait for baggage now and then go to work. It takes like an hour, 10 minutes from here, a drive to get to work. I'm getting a lift from my aunt. She's even got my work clothes that I requested. So yeah, I'm gonna go straight to work, straight to work from the airport. And uh, yeah, it should be an easy shift because of our place shutting down. The workload is not as much as it was before. So it should still be relaxed, but I have got a big task to do. Uh, which will take a bit of time um, but yeah I'm living off water and one chocolate bar basically uh, that's my energy for today so <laughs> and my workplace has stopped serving meals in the evenings now because of a lot less staff so it's just like ah so I haven't got a hot meal <laughs> uh, at work so yeah I was gonna I was hoping to land on time and like have something to eat beforehand that is not the case I do not tell anyone to bring any food for me so I'll be all right now I'll be all right but um, yeah the vlog is about to end once I get through the gates 
and get my luggage. Um, it's been a fun time. I've enjoyed myself since since March 2022. I've been to a lot of places in uh, Europe, in Australia. Um, in, uh, well, I haven't really explored Asia, but went to Africa for the first time. Uh, and obviously the US. Uh, I plan to go to uh, Latin America and South America and parts of Africa and the Southern Africa, just go to safaris. Um, I plan to tour Asia at some point. I have also planned to go to somewhere very cold that you might know about, but it's very expensive to go there. I've had so many plans, but there's been halted a bit because of my job situation, uh, but hopefully things go uh, well and we can get back on track uh, to uh, traveling more often again, because I really enjoy it, really love it. And uh, the F1 included, I love watching F1. But yeah, I, I had trips planned to Africa and South America in October, November, and um, Mexico in January as well on top of that. Central America so I had a lot of plans and uh, I also had plans to watch more F1 um, but yeah uh, life is life but uh, yeah it's been really fun and I've really enjoyed the Spanish Grand Prix despite the budget I was on. Race day made it all worth it like it's not just the actual F1 race everything before that the build up to it and uh, the race one thing about F1 is it goes too fast but the race was great to watch and I really enjoyed it so uh, yeah um, it's been fun. It's been really fun, so I hope you enjoyed it too. I don't know how long this vlog is going to be. I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it right here. How long the vlog is, uh, including the clips from my Canon camera uh, that I filmed at DF1. Um, I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to insert all the clips into Premiere Pro, and we'll see what the final product is. And then, yeah, I'm going to put the time on what it is, all, all clips combined. And when I edit it down, you can see how much I cut off. So there you go. So don't, don't worry, I, I don't cut off like big parts, just you know, some things I cut off. Um, so I put a timer, the vlog is this long, and the vlog length you actually see, that's because I edited it down. But uh, it could be quite a long vlog. <laughs> I planned it to be like approximately like the uh, same as Monza, which was like 35, 37 minutes. Uh, might be a bit longer than that. I mean, it was three days to be fair. BA459 is the, uh, is that one there? The waiting bags. Brilliant. What on earth is split? Oh, we have movement. Bags arriving. Some bags look the same. Please ensure you have identified your bag before leaving the reclaim hall. That looks like mine, but it is not. Oh, it's got a red tag. It's got a familiar design. It's got my two first names on it. Identified. Got nothing to declare. That is the exit. And I'll see you later.